What's up guys? Bringing you a video here on what's going on with my tank. As you can see here, the frag tank has made a return. Uh, and it's currently housing every single piece of acro in my tank. Now, why is that you ask? Well, here's exactly why. I got acro eating flatworms. Yes, I did. I got a uh, acro frag from one of the LFS's. I was at a coral dip and I trusted the LFS just a little bit too much. So um, that's what I get for not dipping. Uh, I'm going to run over the tank real quick and just show you what's going on with it. Let me see if I can find a light here. Oh, that did absolutely nothing. So basically, here's what I got going on. I got a Tunzee 6015 running in here for flow. I got an AquaClear 50 running with some live rock in here, along with the biomatrix that comes with the AquaClear and a sponge filter. Uh, running an overflow here, just a little DIY thrown together real quick. T5HOs, ultraviolet, and an actinic, and I get daytime sup through the uh, window. Um, I might run a 10,000 K uh, with the actinic, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, down in the sump, uh, obviously running a filter sock, and I'm running this Aquion pump right there. Um, and the DIY auto top off that I just made, I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, running the DIY auto top off, I bent this acrylic here over a candle, and it's holding up really good. It's working amazing. Zero complaints, love it. Here's the top off bucket. So that's pretty much it right there. That's the tank. And uh, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be doing my second dip. Uh, I didn't record the first dip just because I wanted to get going on the acro and set the tank up. And it was just too busy to shoot video at the same time. So what I got going right now is I got two gallons of fresh, fresh mixed salt water. It's actually been mixed now for almost two weeks. Um, so I'm going to put that into the sump two gallons of fresh mix into the sump. The sump is off right now, so I'm going to put the two gallons in there, take two gallons out of the top, and use that for my dip, and then essentially I'm doing a water change um, out of the tank with the two gallons, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, you get it. So that's what we're going to do right now. All right, so I got my two gallons of water siphoned out of the tank there. As you can see, it's really low, and I put my two gallons in the sump. So what I'm going to do now is turn the return pump for the tank back on. This plug strip sucks. Got to put the camera down. There we go. So the return pump's running again. Let that fill up. I'm going to let the coral get acclimated to their new water parameters here for a second. Well, for a couple minutes, anyways. Filling up. It'll start overflowing. This runs on a full siphon. It's noisy as shit, but I, I haven't taken any time to tune this thing. I'm not really worried about tuning it, so I just want to get my acro happy. Back to being healthy and happy. There you go, you can see we're filling back up. I'm going to start hearing it's gurgle here pretty soon. And there you go, there's the siphon. Oh, the ATO just kicked on. Except there's no water. go water's off ATO works great so that's about what I had left in the siphon line that just topped off but the salinity uh, the water salinity I put in there was pretty high so let's go ahead and get our dip ready all right so for this treatment I've been using uh, revive right here so what I'm going to do is throw this air stone in and that's going to help mix up the revive and I'm going to keep the air stone in with the coral while I'm dipping just 
because I think it's a good idea. I think there needs to be water movement while you're dipping. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and mix. This is two gallons, so I need to mix uh, eight capfuls of Revive into the container. So I'll come back to you. All right, you can see, well, maybe you can't see, maybe you can't tell. Uh, I got the Revive mixing now. Uh, anybody that gets Revive or has used Revive, I think it's funny that it smells like pine saw. So I'm going to let the air stone go ahead and move the water around here, get the uh, dip solution all mixed up nice. Um, and you'll notice that the Revive also didn't color the water. Um, that's because it's a non-iodine base um, coral dip. So it's really, really good. It's not harsh on the coral at all, but it's, you know, it's a knockout on the pest. So um, I'll come back to you when I start throwing the coral in. All right, now for cleaning up the frag tank, what I'm going to do is just point the power head straight down at the bottom to get all the detritus suspended. And it's going to blow my monies all over the place, but it's okay. The monies I'm not worried about so much. So there you go. You can see we'll start suspending the detritus and my frag rags. So uh, hopefully we can get that to go down the overflow and catch it in the filter sock. Come back at you. Holy crap, y'all. It's Arizona. Never rains, but it's freaking pouring out right now. Holy crap. Move. Fuck. It is coming down. That's what's up. Love rain. About time, too. Shit. Oh, my live rock. Oh, dead rock. I'm killing a lot of rock in the tank. Well, let me make sure my garage is closed and the windows are up in my truck. Now we're exactly at halfway point with time-wise with the dip. Oops, not good with multitasking with the camera. So, good thing to do is go through with a turkey baster and kind of baste away at the base and each of the branches. Anything holding on will hopefully at this point let go. I don't see anything at all in this bucket. Nothing. Maybe a starfish. I see nothing. This is a good, good, good sign. Alright, so we'll go ahead and let the dip finish up and we'll see what comes off in the, with the end result. Drop the airstone back in. So here's the container here, and you're just going to have to trust me when I say I've looked and I see no flatworms so far. I see a bunch of, like, starfish, but these right here. All I see is copepods, a bunch of the baby astrea snails, and one brittle starfish right there that I think was dead from the last dip. It just fell off in this one because it's white. So I don't see any flatworms right now, but I'm going to look a little harder. But in a sense, that's the dipping process that I'm doing right now for uh, my acro eating flatworms. So hopefully here in the next couple weeks I'll be getting the acro back into the 220 because the 220 looks so naked right now without them. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment and I will answer you back. Peace. Alright guys, so <clears throat> with this video I forgot to say um, when I'm dipping and the schedule I'm keeping with dipping the coral, the acros. Um, 
I figure it's a good piece of information I'm going to throw in here at the end. Anyways, um, I'm going to be dipping the acro every five days. Um, now that's just based on a lot of research. I mean, hours and hours and days and days worth of research. And even though there's no known conclusive information on the life cycle of the acro eating flatworms, dipping every five days for four weeks seems to be what works the best. Um, and four weeks without any acro in the main tank being my 220, the acro eating flatworms are going to have no acro to eat, therefore they will starve themselves out and they will eradicate themselves in the 220. Now, being that there's acro in this tank, this is why I have to dip the acro every five days because every five days begins a new life cycle for the eggs that I, I know I'm not getting off of these. I look for them, I can't see them, I got bad eyes and I just, I can't see them. I, I know they're on there, I'm sure they are, but I can't see them. So this is the second week now of having the acros in this tank, so I got two more weeks of dipping every five days. Um, I'm going to be dipping and revive. Um, and then um, I'll probably observe them without dipping for another week or so just to make sure that I'm not seeing any acro eating flatworms. So we'll see how long this is going to take for, for me to go through. Four weeks without my acro and my 220 seems like it's going to be forever, but we'll see what, what happens. Um, I've even heard of people going as long as three to four months treating for acro eating, or, yeah, acro -eating flatworms. So we'll see what happens. Uh, again, so I'm dipping revive for 15 minutes um, each time I dip, and I'm dipping every five days just because that seems to be um, the best information that I can find on the life cycle of the acro eating flatworms. So I hope you enjoyed the video again, and um, I'll probably do another video on the next dip and see where we're at. By the way, um, in the dip container, when I said I didn't see any flatworms, Everything at the bottom of the container was a flatworm and there was a couple starfish, brittle stars. Um, I just can't see that well. Um, and when I got down and really looked hard, um, there was quite a few little itty bitty teeny tiny little acro worms. So that's where we're at. They're off of here now and we'll catch the next life cycle. Take care.